Kia ora, welcome back, I'm the Kiwi Coder, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can attach multiple weapons to your character and uh, switch between them using the keyboard. Uh, so you can see here um, I've got the pistol equipped and if I walk over the assault rifle uh, the character first uh, holsters the current weapon and then equips the new one and yeah um, these weapons both are different you can tell by the, uh, the different particle effects that they have here. And there is also some uh, top secret uh, bonus content hidden somewhere in this video. Uh, so yeah, if you do watch it to the end, uh, let me know if you, f you found it. Cool, and yeah, let's get into it. So this video follows on from a previous video I've made, the Unity animation rigging, keyframing rig constraints to create weapon animations. Uh, so in the scene here I've got a character and when I walk over a pickup it equips a new weapon I can holster that weapon away by pressing X. Uh, what happens when I walk over a new pickup is it basically destroys the previous weapon and attaches the new one as a child of this pivot node and that's the node that we're animating to do the weapon animations. So yeah, I want my character to basically have, um, say like two weapons equipped at the same time, so like a p pistol and assault rifle. Um, but what happens if the pistol, you know, say the pistol is like a uh, holstered on the, the player's leg, then now if I want to holster away this uh, assault rifle, both the weapons animate at the same time. Um, so only one of the weapons can really be a child of this pivot node at once. And the other one should basically be pulled out of the hierarchy. So when I animate the active weapon like that, uh, the other one just stays put. And then when we switch weapons, we basically just switch uh, switch which node is parented to the uh, pivot node. And to do that, we're going to use the multi-parent constraint from the animation rigging package to dynamically change the parent of, uh, of these weapon nodes. Um, so I'll show you how that works first thing I'm going to change is rather than adding the weapon directly as a child of this pivot node I'm going to create like a proxy node down here called uh, like primary weapon and then the that is going to get assigned to the active weapon script um, so now the weapon will get added as a child of this uh, primary weapon node here and I'll use the multi parent constraint to constrain that node to the previous parent that we we're using which is the weapon pivot node and I'll just turn the um, offset off just so it doesn't maintain the offset <laughs> and uh, yeah so everything should just work as it was before um, the main difference is now the weapon has been added as a child down here and uh, all the animations and stuff still work because uh, this primary weapon is being constrained to the pivot node which is the node that we're animating um, so all of that seems like kind of a mouthful um, but let me show you why that's useful uh, you can assign multiple source objects to the multi-parent constraint and whichever one you have set to one will act as the effective parent of the uh, primary weapon node. So for example if I create a new node underneath the aim body layer called like weapon slot primary um, I'll use this object to act as the parent to the weapon while the, uh, the weapon is holstered. So if I just assign that here, um, if I switch these values around for example, now it would think that the primary weapon was attached to the slot node, even though it's not in the same like uh, hierarchy, uh, which is yeah pretty cool. Uh, let me just uh, go into like play mode and show you what the hell I'm talking about. So yeah, if I just uh, grab a weapon and uh, scroll down to the multi-parent constraint, if I swap these values around, um, you can actually see that the slot node is now controlling the position of the weapon, not the pivot node. Um, and yeah, if I switch them back to one, then the weapon goes back into the character's hand. Um, so I just need to synchronize the slot node to the position of the weapon at this point. So if I click the slot node and then the pivot node and uh, click align transform uh, like this. Now when I switch this back, um, it will be in the exact same position. Um, I just need to save these values now. But, so if I copy the component, paste those values back in, hit save, and then go back into play mode. Um, just check everything is working good. Yeah, so this is with the normal thing. And if I switch this around, yeah, everything looks good. Okay. So rather than changing these values uh, just by hand, uh, we can use like the animation window 
Um, so if I just open up the animation window, dock that down here, switch to the rifle animation. Um, uh, let me just go into play mode just so I can actually see what the character's up to. If I grab a weapon, yeah, and hit record, then basically I just want to add a keyframe um, to make the pivot node the parent uh, throughout this whole portion of the clip here, right up until the moment that uh, she lets her hand go, which is about there. So basically that whole segment um, should be the pivot node set to one and then immediately after just switch the values from zero to one and uh, now the parent of the weapon changes effectively from the pivot node to the slot node. Um, so if I just come out of play mode and go back in, should be able to test all that out. Yeah, I'll leave the, um, the parent constraint node set and uh, you can see as I play the animation, um, then it changes from one to zero. And effectively what that's doing is shifting the parent of this node from the pivot node to the slot node and back again as we holster holster the weapon. Now I just need to repeat the same process for the um, for the pistol. So just um, copy the primary node, call this like secondary weapon, and um, just oh cool, it's already updated the constraint object. Um, just need to update the weapon slot. So I'll create a second uh, weapon slot. Thing. So this will be um, for the pistol, it will be attached to the, uh, the leg down here instead. So call that like weapon slot secondary and assign the secondary slot to the secondary weapon. You could call this pistol or whatever you like. Um, and just go into play mode, probably easier just to see what's going on. Pick up the pistol, uh, yeah just need to synchronize the position of the slot node with the pivot node at this point. So align transform um, oh, sorry just copy the transform value of the secondary slot copy component come out paste it back in like that and yeah that should be it I oh, just need to update the um, pistol animation clip as well so um, yeah it, oh, I'll go back into play mode again it's gonna be easier pick up the pistol and yeah, if I hit record at this point, the secondary weapon um, should be keyframed to the pistol pivot and up until that last point again, so same deal. Just find that last frame and then set this to zero, set this to one and just set that back to one and zero. Cool, I think that's, that's it. Cool, so um, just on the character now, uh, the weapon parent is a single node, it's just set to the primary weapon. We also need to assign the secondary weapon in here as well. Uh, so just open up the active weapon script and um, inside this weapon parent, just going to change that into an array and I'm just going to rename this to weapon slots. And um, you'll notice that there is a compile error down here. Um, it now doesn't make sense really. Like when we equip a new weapon, uh, which which slot is it going to get assigned to? The primary one or the secondary one? Um, so we need to just make like a, a enum, uh, not enum class. Sorry, it's C++ mode. Uh, public enum weapon slot and primary weapon secondary weapon. Cool. So and now we'll assign this weapon slot to our raycast weapon here. So public active weapon, weapon slot, uh, weapon slot, like this. And yeah, inside the active weapon, uh, also just give these values. So the primary weapon will be index zero and the secondary weapon will be index one into this array down here. So we can then get the index, weapon slot index of the new weapon using its weapon slot and yeah just cast that to an integer and now we can index the weapon slots using that and that should uh, mean the primary weapon will get assigned to index zero in our array and yeah vice versa cool um so now i actually just need to go to these prefabs um so the um, assault rifle gets the primary weapon slot and the pistol gets the secondary weapon slot 
and I think is that everything? Oh no. So on yeah, on the active weapon, we actually just need to assign the primary weapon and the secondary weapon. Uh, so yeah, we're not assigning the weapon slots directly. Um, it's the primary and weapon, uh, primary and secondary weapon nodes. These are the ones that should be assigned to the active weapon. So if I hit play, <clears throat> and then pick up the assault rifle that gets parented to the primary weapon down here, and the pistol gets uh, parented to the secondary weapon. Um, except we're still destroying the old weapon, um, so need to fix that up. Let's open up the active weapon script and yeah we've only got one weapon right now so we need uh, multiple of these so just uh, create a or we'll turn it into an array and the size of that array should basically be the same as the number of slots there are so that's two in this case uh, I'm just gonna rename this to be equipped weapons so this is like how many weapons the character has equipped um, but only one of them will actually be active so I'm just gonna create a new index um, called active weapon index and that will basically yeah, index into this array to give us the active weapon so yeah, you can just create a new function called get weapon at a particular index and just return the equipped weapon at that index and uh, also just do some bounds checking like if the index is less than zero or uh, the index is greater than or equal to equipped weapons dot length then we can return null in that case just so we prevent like out of bounds uh, errors and yeah then we can just use that function here so previously yeah the update function was just expecting a fixed weapon but now we we can get the weapon at the active weapon index like this and yeah so this is a little bit different <clears throat> this is basically when we equip a weapon it has a weapon slot index which is different from the active weapon index this is like the primary or the secondary index so for example if we have a pistol equipped then and we're trying to equip another pistol we need to destroy that but if we have a assault rifle equipped and we are equipping a pistol then we don't want to destroy it so here we actually need to get the weapon um, at the weapon slot index rather than the active index oops I forgot an equals and then yeah just initialize the weapon as normal and finally we just assign the weapon to the weapon slot index uh, so yeah, that means we basically fill up that array and we'll also assign the active weapon index to that weapon slot index. That's kind of optional. Like if you have the assault rifle equipped and you equip a pistol, maybe you don't want to uh, automatically switch over to the pistol. But in this case, yeah, I'm going to. Um, so yeah, if we go into play mode and um, I think, yeah, we can just check all this out. If I walk over the assault rifle now, uh, yeah, it gets uh, added as a child of this primary node, which is correct. And the pistol gets added as a child of the secondary node. Um, so we have both weapons attached, uh, except you can see in the same view, they're both uh, in the same position. And that's because both the uh, primary parent constraint, the pivot is still set to one, and the secondary is still set to one. Um, and it's because in our animation controller, inside these states uh, they have the right defaults set so the defaults are the ones that come from the scene so um, in this case yeah the default is set to one so if we just make the default um, zero and for both weapons then when we actually play the animation clip that's when it will switch back over so I think this should all work roughly ish <laughs> still a few things to fix up okay yeah so the pistol now looks good-ish and yeah the assault rifle so now we've actually got two weapons um, they're not following the player's animation yet we'll fix it up uh, a bit later I just want to get the, the guts of this out of the way uh, to begin with and uh, so the next stage is just uh, open up the active weapon script. Um, when we equip a new weapon, we need to holster our, ex our current weapon and then 
activate the new weapon coming in. Uh, so I'm going to use coroutines to do this um, and just play them like one after another. So create a new uh, function called holster weapon. Um, create another one which is going to be basically the mirror of this one called uh, activate weapon at a particular index. And then I'm just going to create a third coroutine called switch weapon and this will take a an index a weapon index to holster and a weapon index to activate um, and all this is going to do is just call yield return start coroutine uh, holster weapon at the holster index um, and basically the same for activate and then finally set the active weapon index to that second activate I'm tired, activate index like that cool um, and then so this this play animation now needs to move down inside to activate weapon um, and yeah instead of doing this stuff you can actually just call set parent on the transform directly and just pass in false here it just simplifies things a little bit uh, I think yeah the stuff we still need to do and the active weapon index that's now been done here and we'll call this function from here instead uh, but we'll use a new function called set active weapon int uh, weapon slot index and this will be the new weapon slot index we had incoming and um, yeah, what do we need to do now just call this basically so start coroutine uh, switch weapon index uh, so we need to create like a holster index which will be our active weapon index our activate index will be our weapon slot index and holster index activate what is it activate index Cool, yeah, so when we set an active weapon, um, then we basically need to holster uh, a current weapon and then activate a new one. Um, so to do that, to holster, uh, we basically use what we're doing up here, setting this Boolean um, animator parameter. So if we just uh, get the weapon, so get the weapon at the index we're supposed to be holstering. Oops. Um, and if there is a weapon, because it may be empty uh, in some cases, uh, then we set the boolean holster index to true. And now we just need to wait for that animation to finish playing. So we can do that using yield return new wait for end of frame. And we keep doing this while the rig controller dot uh, get current animator state info dot normalize time is less than one cool I forgot a semicolon yeah so basically we set the uh, holster weapon boolean parameters are true and then we wait for the animation to finish playing and we need a very similar setup for when we activate a weapon but we set it to false instead and we also play this uh, this animation clip here um, and normalize time yeah that's all good so I think that is is pretty much everything um, if I go back into play mode now you can see when I walk over um, so I've got the assault rifle equipped and if I walk over the pistol then the assault rifle gets holstered and the pistol gets equipped and vice versa still some things to fix up like if I walk over the same weapon type it just holsters it and then brings it back out which is <laughs> looks a bit stupid um, but yeah I mean for the most part that's starting to look pretty good um, next thing is just to actually um, make this code here the holstering code uh, just go through these coroutines uh, just to make it a little bit nicer so um, I'll create a new function called like toggle active weapon and that code basically just checks if 
uh, is holstered, then we want to call this activate weapon. Um, so start coroutine, activate weapon index at our current weapon index. Otherwise do the opposite, um, just holster the weapon. And then we just call toggle weapon from inside here. Cool. Um, so now our toggling uh, toggle weapon code is using the exact same stuff as our uh, weapon switching code. And yeah, it all still works, which is cool. Okay, so the last step is actually just being able to switch between the uh, active weapons without walking over a pickup. Um, so just in the active weapon script, um, uh, one thing, just some tidy up that we can do first is rather than passing in like an index here um, for a set active weapon, we can just pass in a weapon slot. Um, just uh, makes it a little bit tidier and a little bit more obvious what is happening. So yeah, when we set the active weapon, um, we're just setting it to the weapon slot of the new weapon that's incoming. And yeah, so now in the update function, we can check if input.get key down uh, key code one, oh no, I think it's like alpha, alpha one. Yeah, so if we press the one key on the keyboard, then we want to um, basically equip our primary weapon. Um, so weapon slot dot primary, and then to equip the secondary weapon, we will press the two on the keyboard. Cool. Um, so yeah, if I go back into the scene and pick up two weapons, uh, come on Unity. Okay, we're done. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I've got the rifle, uh, now I've got a pistol and a rifle, and I can switch between them uh, just by pressing 1 and 2 on the keyboard. Um, so now, if I press 2 at the same time, uh, like one after another, it basically holsters the current weapon and then re-equips the pistol, um, which doesn't look right, so just to fix that up, um, there's a few different ways to do it. The easiest way I've actually found um, is just inside the active weapon script, just check if the index that we are going to equip. If it is the same, then just set the holster index equal to negative one. And that means uh, this portion of the code won't run because get weapon uh, will have negative one passed in here and that will return null, which means this code won't run. Um, so if we just try that out. Then yeah, if I press two, yeah, nothing happens. So basically it just activates, uh, runs the activation code for the weapon that is already active. So yeah, basically nothing happens. Um, but yeah, we can still switch between weapons and yeah, everything else should work as it was. Cool, so the last thing is just to um, fix up this weapon animation uh, or the weapon holster pose. So it's not actually following the character right now. Uh, we just wanna make it, you know, inherit the uh, positions of the character. Um, so to do that, we're going to use the multi-parent constraint again. Um, so on the slot nodes, these are the ones where the, the weapon has been holstered to. Um, just create a new multi-parent constraint and then constrain the slot position um, just to the, to the... If you just pick a bone on the character, I'm going to pick spine 2 for the, um, the primary weapon because it's on the character's back. It should inherit like the rotation and stuff that is going on inside this aim body. Uh, layer and it needs to be after these nodes here to actually inherit those positions um, and the offset I'm also going to leave set to position and rotation that means the offset between these two nodes um, is maintained and all the animation applied afterwards will uh, will keep these uh, these offsets so that's the difference between this position and the spine 2 position that offset there is maintained um, and then for the secondary slot, um, just do the exact same thing. So create the multi-parent constraint, uh, assign it as the constrained object, and then pick a bone. So for the pistol one, the secondary slot, I'm gonna use the hips, um, just so when we look up and down, um, 
yeah, the, uh, it doesn't inherit any of those rotational positions from the back bones. Um, and yeah, just also leave that maintain offset set to position and rotation. So it maintains the offset between this uh, the slot position and this uh, this hips position here, that tiny offset there. Um, so this almost looks correct. Um, for some reason, it's not maintained it correctly, and I think it's just because the um, the idle pose or something. I'm not I'm not 100% sure why, but it's it's pretty close. Um, it still needs some tweaking, um, and the easiest way to do that is actually just create a child node and just call this like weapon slot offset, or maybe I'll call it like weapon slot primary offset, and also another child node here, weapon slot secondary offset. And then inside, rather than using this parent one, we'll just uh, assign the child one here uh, for both the these things here. And that will let us tweak the position of this node in the scene. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, so if I have it holstered, I can now go to the scene view and adjust the position of this thing. Um, the reason I've got to create a child node is <clears throat> because this has got a constraint on it, it's been constrained to this position exactly, so I can't adjust any of the properties here. Um, like rotation doesn't work either. Um, but this one has not actually been constrained to anything. It's only been used as a source object. It's not been constrained, so I can, I can adjust this freely um, because it's just a source position. Um, so if I just uh, synchronize it with the, the weapon pivot position, it should be back to how we had it before. And then also the same for the um, secondary slot, just synchronize. Oh, I, I can only do one at a time actually. So I need to copy the um, slot position, come out of play mode, paste that back in, go back into play mode, um, and just do all the same stuff for the, um, the pistol. So holster the pistol, select that slot position, synchronize it with the pivot point, align transforms, uh, click the slot, copy component, come out, paste the values back in, and voila, this, uh, this should work, hopefully. Nice, looks good. Yeah, um, one last thing to fix up is just <laughs> if we can still shoot the weapon while it's holstered, um, which obviously <laughs> looks I think it can act as like a jetpack. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, so yeah, quickly just fix that up. Um, so we can actually just store some state. I'm just going to create a new parameter here called like is holstered, and then we'll use the um, the coroutines. That was kind of why I chose to use these coroutines actually. So when we start holstering a weapon, we'll set is holstered to true, and when we um, finish holstering the weapon, we'll just set it back to false, and that way. This will um, it will be updated before any animation begins and after any animation completes, uh, which will mean that we're fully aimed and fully holstered. Uh, that will be represented in this uh, boolean. So just inside weapon, um, also just check if we are not holstered, so we're fully aimed, basically, uh, then we are allowed to shoot. So if I just double check all this works, holster the weapon, click. Un unholster it. Oh, I can't unholster it now. Why is that? Uh, did I do something wrong? Uh, okay, so yeah, we need to just pull this holstering code outside. Um, so now we're actually checking this holstered thing inside update weapon. Um, yeah, we just also need to pull the holstering code out. So if we are holstered, <laughs> we can still get out of that state, obviously. <laughs> So shoot, holster, click, doesn't work, nice. And I think that is pretty much all the bugs I've found, they're all gone. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with these uh, these animations. I think it's starting to look pretty good. Um, maybe the animations could be sped up a tiny bit just for gameplay reasons. It's a little bit slow to switch between weapons right now. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I might tweak that outside of this tutorial. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is starting to look like a real, uh, real competitor at Fortnite. <laughs> um, it's funny, like the, the 
more features and stuff you start adding, almost like the worse it looks because you know what it's trying to be. Um, I think this is looking pretty good to be honest. I'm pretty happy with it. But uh, it, it does, you start to see everything that is like missing basically. Like the, um, the back and stuff of the character just looks quite rigid and some of the animations, like the way the character's walking, it's okay. Um, I probably won't change it for a while. Um, but uh, it could it could probably look a little bit better. Yeah, um, so that is it for this tutorial guys. Um, if you have made it to the end of this video, I really appreciate you watching and as a reward, I'm going to show you some, uh, some hidden features that I've been adding outside of these videos. Uh, so if you open up the Raycast weapon script, um, I added this, uh, this, this piece of code here, the collision impulse code, that is led, that's what's letting me knock over those um, glass jars. Um, so just add a, when we uh, create the hit effect in the weapon, um, just add the force at a position using the ray direction and uh, the hit point and use impulse um, just because it will be a one-off hit. Um, the other mode for force mode is um, um, like acceleration or force and these are normally used like when when you have like a continuous force that you want to apply. If it's just a one-off, then impulse is good. And I think the other one, the velocity change is basically the same as impulse, but it doesn't take into the uh, the mass of the object. Um, so it will be a straight up velocity change of the object. It won't actually, the mass, how heavy the object that you're shooting won't have any impact on how strong uh, the force is applied, but impulse will. So if I shoot something that's really heavy, then this, uh, this will not, have the same kind of effect and um, the other thing I've added is you may have noticed but um, inside the weapon um, if I just select one of these weapons like the primary weapon I can actually set the max bounces to something like uh, three and now my um, gun will ricochet off the walls <laughs> it's pretty cool and if I set this up to like 10 it'll ricochet like forever um, it's, it's quite a fun feature to play with, to be honest. And to do that, it was actually really easy using this uh, raycasting system that I've built. Um, so just created a new uh, integer parameter here called max bounces. And then um, when we create a bullet, uh, basically set the max bounces to whatever you want. So 10 or three or whatever you like. And then every time we hit something, so every time our raycast hits something, we do this bullet ricochet code. So we just check that the, oh, so we set the bounces of the bullet when we create one, yeah, um, like this, yeah. So there's, sorry, there's max bounces, which is the property of the weapon, and then every bullet has got a bounce count, which gets initialized to max bounces when we create it. And um, yeah, inside the Raycast segment, when we hit something, uh, we basically check if there are any bounces for that bullet left, uh, we decrease the bounces. And then we just reset the time of that bullet to zero. So we're effectively starting the raycast again and we set its position to the impact point and then we just set its direction equal to reflect the velocity of the bullet had when it, um, the incoming bullet basically reflects that with the hit normal and that will uh, basically make a ricochet effect. And yeah, so that's it for this tutorial guys uh yeah if you've enjoyed watching it then yeah please like and subscribe and share it with your friends and yeah just everybody stay safe out there it's a pretty crazy world um thanks for watching and kakite